today we are going to talk about valuation as a career option for architects now architects have been traditionally doing valuation of buildings for various people for various purposes the most common need for valuation comes from you know loans that people require against property so the banks approach valuate you know people who value or called valuers and these people do valuation for buildings and land so that loan can be given to the person who owns that land or building apart from that people you know nowadays who want to apply for a visa and want to show some assets so they get their buildings valued or their land valued so that that can be submitted to the embassy wherever they want their visa you know application to go through now it is very important to understand that valuation as such has been a unregulated profession that means there has been no as such a regulatory body on valuation before the passing of the ibbi now ibbi changed valuation in india and ibbi is a full form of insolvency and bankruptcy uh, you know code so it was in 2016 that this ibbi was uh, rolled out and now every valuation expert or every valuer has to register as a valuer in ibbi now a question to be asked what is the need and for what kind of valuations do we need to register as a valuer in ibbi mostly two for any proceeding or any case which requires ibbi or the indian insolvency or bankruptcy code you know wherever there is any kind of a uh, requirement of a valuer for bankruptcy or insolvency proceedings or insolvency or bankruptcy uh, processes then that valuer has to be registered with ibbi the second case is for any to think to do with companies act so according to the companies act 2013 a valuer is called a valuer only when he is registered valuer under the ibbi so now what is important to know how can an architect you know choose to become a valuer first question that we need to ask is do we need ibbi registration if you are getting clients for uh, from a reliable source in a bank so for the for example the bank manager tells you that you know this particular person needs a loan against land or property and you know bank as such is not directly under the companies act or under the ibbi if it is just a matter of loan it is not the matter of bankruptcy it is not the matter of insolvency it is not the matter of anything to do with the companies act it's an individual not registered in a as a private limited company and for a purpose as defined in companies act in that case you need to be registered valuer but if it is not within this ambit then you can you know choose to become a valuer without registration and you know you as a architect you're already trained in estimation and costing and with experience with a professional who's a valuer you will gain a lot as you go on you know practicing under him or on your own in this profession of valuation now something important is that how to become a valuer if you want to you know choose to uh, choose this pathway of ibbi so, so number 1 before the passage of ibbi there were many you know societies or bodies or groups of people who used to run valuation you know certifications registrations these were actually not government bodies as such some of them were government bodies but most of there were many of them which were not government bodies and these after the ibbi became rvos or registered valuer organizations now what you have to do is if you want to become a valuer you have to register with a registered valuers organization and you know take their membership after you take their membership you have to do a 50 hours course which is you know also available in the online mode depends upon what kind of uh, uh, asset class we so we'll talk about asset class it also depends upon whether the rvo or the registered valuers organization has an online you know provision to give you the course so now in the pandemic many of them are providing online courses now 
So once you have uh, registered as a member of RVO, we have become a member of the RVO, then you have to take the 50 hours course. After that, you have to apply to give an exam, which is in the online mode with IBBI. This exam, you have to pay the fees directly to IBBI. And after you pay that fees, you can, you know, if you clear the exam, then you can submit all your documents to IBBI and, you know, get them verified. And then you are registered as a value or your name is put up on the website of IBBI. And then you can practice for valuation under the IBBI code, whenever there is a requirement for IBBI code or requirement under the Companies Act for any case which requires valuation under the Companies Act 2013. Now, uh, you know, who can give the exam? So, you know, there are some qualifications. First of all, who can join RVO? Who can become a, val you know, a valuer? First of all, we're going to talk about the asset class. There are three assets cla asset classes under the IBBI. Number one is land and building. Number two, plant and machinery. Number three is securities and financial assets. For all the architects who are listening and, you know, who want to become valuers, you are mostly concerned and actually only concerned with land and building. So for the land and building category, you have to be either BARC, that means Bachelor in Architecture, Bachelor in, or, you know, Bachelor in Civil Engineering, Bachelor in Town Planning. And once you've done bachelors, then you have to do experience of five years. You have to have experience of five years uh, after bachelors. And that has to be either working on your own. So if you're working on your own, that experience has to be in work completion certificates, whether you have done particular work and you've got a work completion certificate, or if you're working under someone, you have to get a you know, certificate from the employer that you are working under valuation uh, and you were giving valuation services. Now, in case you have done a PG, like you are master in architecture, master in town planning, or must M tech civil engineering, then it is PG plus three years of professional experience. And there is also a postgraduate program in real estate valuation. So that is also counted, you know, so if you've done bachelor of architecture or civil engineering or town planning, and then you've done a master's in real estate valuation, you are eligible. But you know, normal masters also is as good as the real real estate valuation master. So any PG that you do with respect to that has to be in the land and building class. So the PG cannot be in uh, anything apart from your core discipline. Then it's my most important to know that you have to be employed. You can be employed when you are appearing for the exam, but when you're applying for registration, you don't, you cannot be employed. So, you know, all these rules and further rules are in the description below as a FAQ from the IBBI website. So this was mostly about how to become a valuer if you are an architect. It is a good option to get yourself registered. You'll also learn because you'll get 50 hours of education. You will also learn uh, because you, you'll be with other valuers in the RVO. But the question is very important that do you need compulsory registration under IBBI? The answer is no. If there are certain other laws which require valuation, which is not under Companies Act, which is not under IBBI or the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code of 2016, then you did not register through this process of valuation registration. Then you can you know, simply be an architect or a civil engineer or a town planner with certain experience and you can do the work of valuation if the person whom you're submitting to accepts your work your stamp and your you know professional uh, qualifications now another point to be noted that if you have a professional degree and you are registered with a professional body then you know again it is three years but this has to be confirmed when i say confirmed you know the registered valuer organization will decide whether you know they will take your experience after the uh, professional uh, body membership or they will count the bachelor of architecture uh, the day you have been given the degree so it is most important that all architects you know pay attention when estimation and costing is going on while they are studying architecture in their college so that they can really make uh, this into their profession so thank you i hope you like and subscribe
to this channel and you see more videos in this channel thank you very much